Welcome to our live stream. Today, I am going to be announcing the August Art Dare, which is Household Mosaics. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need for an art prof, critiques, and tutorials. This art dare, I think, is going to be really fun because we usually don't do 3D art dares. Typically speaking, it's hard for a lot of people to access sculpture supplies. But in this case, you don't need sculpture supplies. Pretty much anything is game here. And I think a really fun part of this art dare is actually going to be hunting down the objects. That, to me, is almost half of the art dare. Of course, there's the arranging and coming up with the design, but I encourage you guys to really think about what types of objects could work. Now, if you want information on the art dare, you want to go to artprof.org, you want to click on art dares, and that will bring up this page. What you guys want to do is scroll down and then you will see that we have all the links to past art dares. You want to click on the August Art Dare, and that will bring you to this page, which has all the information on submissions, on the Art Dare Leap, anything you guys want to know. There's also tons of examples. A lot of the pieces that I'm going to show you today in this live stream are on that page. So if you guys want to revisit some of those images, that should be pretty easy. So here's what we're thinking for household mosaic. You're going to find any object could be inside or outside your home to create a mosaic. And I think what would be really cool, you guys, is to say something about who you are and where you live. Because depending on the country you're in, the landscape outdoors is so different. And also I was thinking that depending on what type of food you cook or the objects that you keep around your house. So I really think about the objects in this project. They're really an opportunity for you to say something about who you are. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. If you wanna just get random stuff and throw it together, that's cool too. But I also find that because we have such a strong international audience here at ArtProf, that that could be really fun because actually the last art dare that we did, which was texture cubes, so many people did foods and textures from objects that I'd never heard of before. Like somebody did all this candy from Colombia. I was like, whoa, I never heard about any of this. So this is a chance for you guys to really show where you are and who you are. Now, a very important part of this art dare to understand is that you don't have to use glue. So for example, especially if you're using food items and you don't want to waste that food, that's a really good idea because once you put glue on the food, you can't eat it anymore, but you can. I mean, if you want to glue the objects down and make it a more permanent piece, you can do that as well. So that's really your call. The one thing that I really would think about is what surface you put it on. For example, I probably wouldn't build your mosaic on a really sleek surface because then the objects are going to move around. You're going to have trouble getting them to stay in place. Something that's a piece of cloth is always nice. You'll see an example we have later on, somebody actually put it on the plate. And the plate was really fun because the plate had a color which actually contributed to the way the design looks. So I would definitely think in advance about what surface you put it on. Or for example, you probably don't wanna put it on your dining room table because you're not gonna be able to move it. And so that is definitely a consideration for you guys to think about. We've got a great comment here from Danya. They are saying flowers or stuff from the garden would be good for mosaics. Yeah, I mean, I know, especially some people are like hardcore gardeners. You can get beautiful objects from your gardens. But it's fun, I think, just to get all the supplies and throw them together, as you see here in this photograph. And we do have on the Art Dare page, a whole list of suggestions. Of course, you can do anything you want, but in case you're wondering how to do that, just take a look at this list if you need a place to get started. Okay, let's take a look at some examples and think about 
how to stimulate this idea of mosaics because Alice DB is saying here in the chat, I was looking at mosaics from the Louvre with precious stones and all it was so beautiful. Yeah, because there's a real history of mosaics. I mean, mosaics go back all the way to ancient Rome. I mean, if you visit any of the ancient Roman cities like Pompeii or Hadrian's Villa, the floors are gorgeous. I mean, they're all these just intricate mosaics. And I mean, this is back when they were like cutting like individual pieces. Like you think about how they actually made these objects. I mean, sometimes they're ceramic, sometimes they're actual um, stones or something like that. So I would really encourage you guys to look up some mosaics for some inspiration. And in terms of the image, totally your call. If you wanna do something that's more decorative, like the design that you're seeing here, or you wanna do something more figurative, you can do that as well. It's totally up to you guys. If you want it to be abstract or something more figurative. Tom G is asking, can we make more than one for each week? Make as many as you want. <laughs> I mean, it's like the world is your oyster. I mean, I think it might be fun to think about doing some little mosaics in the beginning, just to get your blood pumping, thinking about how to use the materials. And then you might say, for example, work your way up to a big one at the end of the month, or you could do one every single month. And we do have, again, the Art Prof Leap to give you guys some structure if you want it. Of course, you don't have to do the leap, you can do whatever you want, but anything that you guys wanna do, it's totally doable. Lisa H is saying, I plan on gathering outdoor stuff with old grocery bags during walks. My neighbors are gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> no, but that's great because I think when you go for a walk in your neighborhood, you think about all the objects you see on the way and how those objects, to me, they're really a statement about where you are and who you live. And I think that's really, really cool. Now, if you guys have not been to this place, Basilica of San Vitale in Ravenna, Italy, oh, if you wanna feel inferior as a mosaic artist, go here because it will make you feel like, oh my God, how did people ever do this? And there are these gorgeous, just sumptuous mosaics of Justinian and Theodora who you're seeing here. And I really like looking at these close-ups because actually from a distance, these mosaics are so intricate that they almost don't look like mosaics. They almost feel more like paintings. And I love looking at these where the mosaic pieces actually are very, very visible. And you can see some of the mosaics, the objects are pretty uniform. For example, a lot of them in here, they're fairly the same shape. I mean, there's a few that are more circular, but this guy's so cool. If you guys ever go to Philadelphia, Isaiah Zagar, who's a contemporary mosaic artist, he has these mosaic gardens and they're insane. I mean, I've never seen them in person, but the photographs are extraordinary. I mean, it's like anything that he can think of is in these mosaics. I mean, you look at this one and there's bottles and there are pieces of glass. By the way, if you guys decide to like hack up a bottle, just be real careful because the glass shards are gonna be really sharp and you don't wanna hurt yourself. But look him up because I love his mosaics because they're so emotive. And I just feel that a lot of the mosaic art that I've seen, especially a lot of the contemporary stuff right now, a lot of it's very rigid. A lot of it's about making a photorealistic looking mosaic. And, and this is just so like wild and totally out there. Yeah, like Alice DB is saying, make something good from stuff that should not be on streets, just be safe. Absolutely. I would say that's the case for anything that we ask you guys to do. Just make sure you're not doing anything that's gonna actually hurt yourself. And ACS Art is saying the different size possibilities are overwhelming. Might have to dig out my drone to take pictures. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, some of you guys, you'll see later, one of the Art Dare Leap Weeks is to create something that's outdoors in nature. So when it's outdoors, I mean, you really can go as far as you want in terms of scale. So that'll be really, really cool. I think a lot of you guys have probably seen Andy Goldsworthy, who is a contemporary installation artist. He does these just beautiful, eloquent arrangements of stones. 
He's done these really delicate ones involving color and leaves. And color is important too. I think that with the mosaics, it's really easy to get sucked into, oh, the design and the objects and how do I put that together? But the color can make a big difference because I think one of the hardest things about making a mosaic is that it's hard to get contrast. And it's really easy, I think, for a lot of mosaics to just turn into this mush of objects. And what I like about Andy Goldsworthy is he really is conscious of contrast. For example, having the dark exterior, moving towards the center, towards something that's a lot brighter, a little bit more brilliant. So don't forget about contrast because color is great, but you don't want your colors to be all the same level of tone because they're gonna mush together and that's not gonna look very good. Thank you so much for the super chat, Tom G, who is saying, Happy you are back on YouTube. We missed you. I missed you guys too. I'm still going to take a little bit of time. So you'll see that next week I'm not going to be around as much, but I just need a little more time to get settled because, oh my God, that was a long trip driving from Massachusetts to Utah. So I need a little bit of time to settle in. I think some of you guys may have seen this where he's taking these pebbles and he arranges them in this just beautiful, lyrical design. And so you can see from these mosaics, there's such different levels of organization, of pure chaos. I mean, those Isaiah Zagar pieces are just explosive. And this is so, I think, pre-planned. And so that's what I really like about mosaics is that there's such a range of what you can do in terms of materials and also scale and also design. I mean, you guys can see some of these have really definitive borders. This one's not so, it's got this funky snail-like pattern. And you'll see with some of the other examples that some of them are funky shapes as well. It does not have to be a circle, even though some of the ones we're looking at are circular as well. Jake is saying, I heard you move cross country. We missed you. How did that go for you moving your paintings? Oh my God, you guys. I'm gonna become a miniature painter because moving some of those prints was horrific. Like so much bubble wrap. I just thought I was gonna die. So yes, I'm just really, really glad that it's over. <laughs> anyway, you guys will hear more from me probably mid August. I'll be around a little bit more. If you want some inspiration for different materials, you guys can always go to artprof.org go to teaching and learning art online and look at the home art supplies page and you'll see there's a ton of supplies, all kinds of things that you can find in your house that are cheap, that are accessible. And so look at these because I think sometimes it's hard to visualize exactly what something's going to look like or what it's capable of. I mean, these supplies, some of them are good for painting. So you might want to skip over those, but things like dandelions would be beautiful. Those Japanese maple leaves that you guys see, those would all be gorgeous for you guys to take a look at. Okay, let's look at some examples. And these are all done by Art Prof staff. You guys probably have seen Mark Steer around in the Discord, giving you lots of critiques. Um, I think it's been great for you guys to get to know the staff outside of the TAs because we have a lot of support staff in addition to the teaching artists. And I, I just love what Mark did, especially in terms of the apple slices and beautiful work in terms of the contrast. Like you guys see those dark patches of black. I don't even know what they are. Maybe they're raisins. <laughs> I don't know. But you'll see that if you blur your eyes and you get past the individual pieces, there is a very structured design to this. And so that that's really what you're combating with mosaics is how do you organize or how do you not organize? And I would say if you want something more chaotic, you probably want to consider really creating a foundation for it. So I'm gonna show you guys, here are some photos of Mark actually creating the mosaic. And you can see there is somewhat of a strategy here. And you do sometimes have to think about the layering, like what do you put down first, what goes on top of it, there's a lot of different ways you guys can consider. Like here you can see Mark traced these corn kernels and made the fruit loops around the side. And then really the rice fills in between those corn kernels. And so it is worth, I think when you're making these pieces, thinking in advance 
in layers. You don't have to, but I think when you work in layers, it gives you more possibilities. Like here you've got the layers of the rice and then you can see on top of the rice, I think Mark used cough drops, <laughs> those, those little red things. They look a little like cherry tomatoes, but I'm pretty sure they're cough drops. And so just thinking about how to layer that, I think would be a really good way to get going. Thank you so much for the super chat, 10,000 crows, who is saying welcome back, Prof Lou. I missed you guys so much. I mean, like, yes, I had to get that thing done. And let me tell you, it was not fun, but it was so sweet that all of you guys missed me. I really like that a lot. And Valerie is saying, could food be considered a mosaic, like a gorgeous cheese platter? Of course. <laughs> I mean, pretty much anything goes. And if you make a cheese platter, you can eat it later. By the way, speaking of cheese, we stopped by Wisconsin. We bought so much cheese. <laughs> it's like, I'm, saying, I'm like, when are we ever going to eat all this cheese? So I feel like I should do something like that. But yeah, th there's really no material that you cannot use for this art dirt. Everything is game in terms of what you guys want to use. Now, this is a really different approach that Luna took. Some of you guys probably have seen Luna in the critique channels in the Discord. And so Luna actually went outside and gathered all these leaves, pieces of tree bark. And her piece is so different because she really took the materials and literally like cut every single piece of mosaic. It's so different than Mark's because if you look at Mark's, Mark really took the materials and layered them on top, but Mark didn't actually cut the cough drop in half or anything like that, not like you'd wanna do that. But you can see in Luna's images that Luna took an X-Acto knife and was actually cutting the leaves into a particular shape and then layer them together. We've got a really good question here from W315. They are saying, when is a mosaic and when is it a collage? I don't know. I mean, I don't know that there is a particular definition. Maybe mosaic artists could correct me. I'm not totally sure. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that is one of those gray areas where you're not really sure. Makes me think about monotypes and how a monotype is not a print, but it's not really a painting either. I think you guys just do what you think is your interpretation of a mosaic. And that's fine. It's totally up to you guys how you want to do that. And so you can see in Luna's piece, I thought this is really smart that Luna put it on a black board. And actually one of the things I really like about Luna's piece is that you can see the blackboard. You can see the spaces in between the pieces. And actually Luna painted over the mosaic. And so she created something that's a little bit more painterly. And it's up to you guys. I mean, you can do it however you want, but I, I just love the colors. And also notice that Luna used a limited palette. And you can see in some of these, the color is like anything. But in Luna's case, the color is pretty monochromatic. I mean, there's a little touch of red underneath the eyes, but you can see that's one way to organize mosaic is if you have a really particular color scheme, it's easier for the mosaic to feel a little bit more cohesive. Jake has a question about Mark's piece. So let's pull that up. Uh, they are saying, with Mark's mosaic, would you put glue on the plate so the rice would last, or would you just sit it on top? I mean, I'm such a big person in terms of <laughs> wasting food, like that would bother me so much. And so I wouldn't put glue on top of it because I'd want to be able to eat it later. I think that it depends on the material. I mean, I would guess that with the rice, it wouldn't be difficult for the object to sit on top of the rice, but you just have to try it out. I mean, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. It really depends on what's going on. Okay, and actually let's look at this close up of Luna's piece and you can really see the way that she got the mosaic to come together. This is a gorgeous mosaic by Hema, who you've also seen in the Discord. And I just love the way Hema handled the colors and also the scale. Does everybody notice how these flower petals are really large? And then, I don't know, are those sesame seeds? They look like little sesame seeds or beans, but those are tiny. And I think that's another thing to consider is that you might want to have some objects that are really large. You might have some that are tiny, some that are in between, because sometimes it's a tough balance. Like you don't want your mosaic 
to be so much the same that is boring, but you also don't want it to be so diverse that it completely falls apart. So it's a tricky thing. And honestly, you guys, before you get started, just really spend time looking at objects, walk around your house. I mean, I was sitting eating dinner the other day. I'm like looking <laughs> at this jar of toothpicks and mm, that would be a nice mosaic. So you have to sort of be in the mindset of being on a treasure hunt to do this art dare, which I think would be really, really fun. Yeah, Alice is saying, please, please don't waste food in the process. I know, I mean, I'm such a stickler about not wasting food. In fact, you know what my parents told me when I was a kid? They told me that for every piece of rice, because we ate rice all the time, that was left on my bowl, that I would get a puck mark on my face for every piece of rice. And it terrified me so much that to this day, I'm compulsive. When I eat a bowl of rice, I have to eat every single last piece. My parents, think, my friends think I'm crazy. They're like, what, doesn't matter. It's just a couple of rice pieces, but I don't know. It, it, it's something I got really used to. Yuki is asking, won't it rot? Well, I think that what you could do is just make the mosaic and snap a picture. I mean, you probably don't want to work on the mosaic for a month. You probably want to work on it for a few days or something. And so it's up to you guys how you want to do that. Because yeah, I mean, some of these things like the broccoli that Hema has, that's probably going to wilt at some point. And ACS Art is saying, use for the black chia seed I bought and never eat. I know, isn't it funny all the random stuff you end up with in your kitchen? Like I was cleaning out my kitchen to move to Utah. I was like, why do I have chickpea flour? Oh, that one recipe that I made 10 years ago that I never made again. <laughs> like it's very funny, all the things that you start to think about. And Seven Angelic is saying you could make a mosaic of all the ingredients that go into a meal afterwards. Oh, that's great. I think that's a really nice way to maybe give the mosaic a little bit of a theme. And Starving Artist says collage tends to be glued. Oh, literally means glued in French. I didn't know that. With flatter material like paper, whereas mosaics tend to be more three-dimensional, stone, glass, and materials. Okay, cool. That's a really good definition. I guess I never have really thought about it that hard. So <laughs> I guess that's why I wasn't really sure. So take a look at Hamas piece. And there's so many beautiful color decisions. I mean, I feel like the fact that Hema chose these very warm colors, the pinks, the oranges, the black eyed peas, and Hema put it on a blue plate. And that is part of the mosaic. And so don't think about your surface as just, oh, that's what I'm putting stuff on top of. The blue plate really is a participant in the color scheme. And so if you're gonna put it on a plate or something like that, think about that color. Don't just put it on any surface. And if you are gonna put it on just any surface, maybe like a black cloth or a black board, just something that's not gonna get in the way because if you put it on say a rug that has a pattern on it, that's not gonna look very good. So it's better whatever surface you use that it be a flat color because then it's going to be a little more cohesive. I mean, I love the broccoli. Isn't that asparagus in the top too? I mean, it's so cool the way that Hema cut the broccoli so that it fits the shape of the plate. I think that's amazing. So there's just a lot of really cool things. Anya is saying, I think the temporary nature of some of these mosaics is really beautiful. I think it will make me more free to experiment. That's such a good point, Anya, because I think that we all know this, that it, there is a tendency for a lot of us to get very worried about, oh, we really want to make it look good. We have to get good results. And the fact that these are pieces that you, I mean, I guess you could if you were a full out mosaic artist, you could spend forever on a mosaic. But the fact that we're using household items, things that are fairly easy to find, I think will be really nice for you guys to have that freedom. I think that would be really, really fun. Yeah, Alice is saying, I'd also use objects that I love. Try to make something emotional and representative. Take a pick and that's it. Yeah, you guys can make stories out of these mosaics. I mean, you can see that Luna made an eye, Marx was more decorative, and Hema really created a scene with the bird and the environment. And so the images are really, really up to you guys. Michael is asking, could the mosaic also be a performance piece? 
I don't know. I mean, show us, Michael. I'd be very interested to see what that might look like. Now, as you guys know, we do give out prizes, which is really fun. We give out mystery art supplies that show up on your door. And another cool prize is you can get three months access to our voice channel in Discord. And so that's where me and Jordan, we drop in, we have these live voice sessions. You can come with an artwork, get it critiqued. We're on video, you guys are on audio. You can actually talk to us, which is really fun because while I love the live streams and I love the chat, it is so nice to hear voices. Like I see all your names in the Discord and I don't hear the voices, but then when I hear the voices in the voice channel, it's like, it just really flushes out who people are. And I just have loved that experience. So that's a really cool prize. Now we also give out for the prize winner, you can get a portfolio critique, you can get a website critique, an Instagram critique, and these you can purchase if you want. I mean, you can do that anytime you want, but oh boy, it's fun to get one of these for free because let's just say they're not $5. So that's not what we charge for these critiques. And remember at the end of the month, we do a video that shows actually the end of the next month, a video that has featured entries. We try to show as many different people as we can. But I think as you guys know, those of you who have done the art dares in the past, the coolest part of this is seeing what other people are doing. I mean, to me, that's so close to being in a classroom, seeing how other people respond to the same prompt is so fun, you guys. And so just make sure that not only are you making the music, but see what other people are doing and get some inspiration from that. Because I know when I was a student, I definitely am somebody who thinks a lot about what other people are doing, getting inspired by that. Really, really fun. All right, let's talk about the Art Dare Leap. Now remember, the Art Dare Leap is not required. This is only if you want something a little bit more structured. And you don't have to do the whole Art Dare Leap. I mean, you could do week one and then skip the rest of it. It's totally up to you guys how you wanna do that. So the Art Dare Leap, the first week is nature objects found in your neighborhood. Take a walk, get a bag, pick things up, anything you guys can think about and maybe have that mosaic say something about who you are and where you live. Week two, you want to use objects that are metallic, shiny, transparent, translucent, anything you can think of. First thing I thought of was jelly beans. <laughs> of course, it always has to do with food. In the end, it's all about food. Week three, complementary colors. So you wanna pick a pair of complementary colors. These are the pairs. You're gonna pick either objects that are only blue and orange. Next time you could do only purple and yellow or only red and green. Complementary colors, I mean, it take me a whole stream to explain it, but basically complementary colors that are crossed from each other on the color wheel and they have really beautiful contrast that really pops. And so see what you guys can do with that because I think complementary colors are a great way to get contrast and for the colors to be a lot more vibrant. Blue Wolf Spirit is saying, I consider it an accomplishment to just complete and submit something for the art there. Exactly. And you guys, you know what? You don't have to post it publicly. Somebody actually messaged me on Instagram a bunch of their texture cubes from the last month's art dare. And they said that they were very hesitant. They didn't want to post. They felt a little embarrassed. I said, that's great. You know, that's fine. You don't have to make it public. Totally, you can DM it to us on Instagram. And then another option is you guys can also submit with our upload form. So that's another way. If, if you want to submit and not have anybody see it, that's a really good way to do that. So week four, round objects. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be a jelly bean. Again, jelly beans. <laughs> it could also be gummy bears. It could be anything that's round. It does not have to be a perfect oval or a circle. It just has to be round in some way. However you guys want to do that. And Danya is saying creating and finishing any art is an accomplishment for me. I'm really glad you see it that way, Danya, because I know it's very easy for a lot of people to get really down on themselves. Deep D and Eloise did this wonderful stream the other day about how we're our toughest critics. We look at ourselves very critically. And I think that, you know, you got to give yourself a pat on the back for putting the work out there and getting it done. 
So again, the information that you guys are looking for to reference, go to artprof.org, click on Art Dares, and you want to scroll down this page where you're going to see links for all the past Art Dares. You want to click on the one that says August Art Dare. And on this page has all the information that I gave to you guys in the stream. There's also the upload form. And by the way, you guys don't use the upload form if you post on Instagram. The upload form is only for people who are not on Instagram or if you want to submit it privately so that I can't, nobody else can see it. I would really encourage you guys to do it on Instagram. It's a lot easier for us to organize the content. But again, it's totally fine if you want to use the upload form. Now, if you do use Instagram, what you want to do, make sure you tag us so we see the post and use hashtag artprofdare. We do share as many entries as we possibly can throughout the month on our Instagram stories. So check out what people are doing there and make sure you tag us because we really want to show everybody else what you guys are doing. 10,000 Crows is saying, I still didn't do something for the art dare last month. I've been dealing with a lot of stress, so I keep not doing them. That's okay. You know, you guys, it's totally okay to take a break because if making artwork stresses you out that much, that's not good for you either. You want to take care of yourself and you want to make sure that it's something that's enjoyable. Like for me, if I'm really hating <laughs> the process of making art, it's time for me to sit back and do something else. We do have a podcast now. It's available on Spotify, also on iTunes, where you can leave us a rating and a review. Join us on Discord. I will be in the post live streams channel in a few minutes. We can chat more. We can hang out. You guys can ask me about my move and all that stuff. Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much, as always, to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. Thank you to everybody who joined in the live chat today and shared your ideas, shared what you were going to do for the art there. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.